the picture books I grew up with, um, probably my favorite one was one called uh, Sam and the Firefly by P.D. Eastman. It was his first book he ever did, um, but he did Are You My Mother and um, Go Dog Go. But Sam and the Firefly is this really weird book about an owl and a firefly and they fly around at night and the owl shows him how to make lines in the sky and the firefly figures out he can spell words that cause trouble. And then he ends up making planes crash into each other and he makes uh, movies open all night for free and all these kinds of weird signage things. And then uh, a hot dog guy whose business he messes up kidnaps him in a jar and drives him out to the country. And it's this really brutal scene and you don't know what's going to happen to this poor firefly. And then he gets stuck on the tracks of this uh, railway and this train is coming. It's going to hit this old man's truck, the, fire, the hot dog guy's truck. And then the owl, who's been following along this whole time and mortified that where he's taught this firefly, kind of grabs this jar this firefly is being held captive in and breaks it on the tracks. And the, uh, the firefly can write stop in the sky because this train doesn't hit the track and he saves the day and it's this great thing. But I never remembered the story so much as the way that the whole thing felt. It felt like the nighttime. It felt like just this deep, dark night. The whole book did. And I always thought, like, it's so interesting how you remember mood in a book just as much as the story when you're a kid. You just dive into the mood of the thing. Picture books are the best because they're so short. You can write them as fast as they're read if you get the right idea. And that's literally how both books were done. They were written in about 10, 15 minutes when the idea finally clicks over. You can spend years in between shuffling around and making sure all, everything's just right. But the actual idea comes so fast that I would just stand up and leave the room and go to the computer and get used to the screen for a minute at three in the morning and then type it all out and then close it down and you see it in the morning and see if it works. They're written from first person or just voices. There's no narration and that's on purpose because if, as soon as you narrate something, there's an authority telling you what's happening for real. And if you remove that, if you take it out, then um, the story is whatever, like the characters aren't going to tell you everything. They're just going to tell you what they want to tell you and you have to piece it together yourself and there's nobody in the book telling you the whole story. And so you're the whole story. As the audience, you're the one who has to grab that. And it's involving. It leaves a lot to the imagination, but not the events. You don't want to ever be unclear about what happened. You just want to be unclear maybe about why or who did, who thought what or how they're feeling about it. That can be ambiguous, um, but the events should be pretty clear, I think. I think that this is like the luckiest job because your whole job, or at least 90% of it, is to keep yourself engaged and interested. As soon as you sort of move sideways instead of forward in the work, um, it's not only bad for you, it's bad for the work, it's bad for the audience, it's bad for the form. Just generally, that sounds really precocious maybe, but it's, that's all you can do is to keep moving forward in it. And I think just as long as, I don't know what the work is going to look like in 10, 20 years if I get to keep doing it that long, but I'm really hoping it's still interesting to me. As long as it's just generally challenging and I still feel like I'm in over my head, that would be great. I would love that.